Hello again, I am Blunty. That was a very formal introduction. I feel like that was overpronounced. Does that feel awkward to you guys? G'day, I am Blunty. No, that was too casual. Hello again, I am Blunty. That felt better. If you're like me, you're a gamer, content producer, photographer, you can just never, ever, ever have enough of this stuff. Storage, especially fast storage. And these, by the way, are very, very, very... And when I say very, I mean very fast drives. I don't know. I can honestly overstate just how fast these are. I don't know why I'm whispering. It's just a dramatic effect thing. I'm going to tell you about one of them. You don't need me to tell you this is an M.2 SSD drive, do you? You know, they all look like this, don't you? Well, this video isn't actually about this. I mean, this is one of the WD's new fancy WD black models. They've just recently launched a line of these in various capacities and stuff, and their NVMe drives and they're very, very fast. And I will be talking about these more in the future because I have a small stack of these that WD have sent in for a series of sponsored videos, of which this is one. Uh, and you want to stay tuned because I do have a giveaway in one of them as well. One of these drives and another drive as well. So stay tuned for that. But this video is about this one. This is similar to this one in that it is an M.2 SSG drive. Uh, it is also one terabyte. It is also NVMe. Did I say NVMe already? Yeah, but this one's got this. This one has the heatsink on it. Uh, and while this is good, this is gooder because these things, as we've been pushing them faster and faster in higher, higher capacities and things like that, they get warm. They get pretty toasty. In fact, some motherboards even come with built-in heat sinks on the M.2 slots these days to accommodate for that. Help keep the drives cool, which helps them keep them running more efficiently, which helps keep them running for longer as well, because heat is the enemy of electronics. And the more stuff heats up and cools down and heats up and cools down, that cycle can, over time, uh, wear out components. It wears out those sort of physical connections of the little chipsets and things like that. Every time something gets hot, it swells up, you know, there's basic thermal science and when it cools, it shrinks down again and you do that again and again and again and again and again uh, and quite rapidly, it can sometimes cause wear and tear on some components. And that's one of the main reasons you would want a heat spitter on one of these things. It doesn't necessarily keep it cooler overall because it will eventually reach a, you know, a temperature of equilibrium. But what a heat sink and heat spreader does do is help stop that cycle from being so fast that evens out the heating and cooling basically. It helps slow it down so it heats up a lot slower and it cools down a bit slower as well. So the thermal stress is, is more spread out which helps make these last longer and perform more efficiently for longer. Now, like I said before, these good, these gooder. I have nothing against these. I've been using the raw M.2 SS drives for very years now and have no qualms about using them raw whether or not the motherboard has a heatsink on them anyway. But if you've got room for it, these are always a good idea. Just that little extra peace of mind. And they look nice as well. I mean, look at this thing. Look at this looks beautiful engineering. It's so, it's, you know, it's simple and clean, but it's just classically WD engineering. It looks pretty. So even if you do have a heatsink built on your motherboard, you maybe you want to get rid of it and use this instead because this looks prettier than most of those. I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. But all that stuff about the heatsink aside, what I want to look at in the second part of this video is why this bit is important. This little word, right, well acronym really, not word, NVMe. Because there are two different protocols that these things commonly talk on and NVMe is the gooder one. Good, gooder. So let's see why this is gooder. See if we can pry out a difference by doing some real world stuff, because you guys know me, I'm all about showing things in the real world. So let's throw this in a machine. It installs rather unsurprisingly, just like any other M.2 drive. Easy peasy. Now, this isn't really a full on review, so I'm not gonna drill down onto a bunch of raw numbers and charts and such, but for the sake of mathematically showing just how much faster these NVMe drives are over the SATA type, here's some ATTO benchmarks. Now, don't be fooled just by looking at the length of those bar graphs. That's deceptive. This program dynamically adjusts the scale, you see. You're looking at a zero to one terabyte X axis on the standard M.2 SSD. Meanwhile, the WD Black is so much faster, we need to see that X axis scale quadruple to four terabytes a second at its peak. Because the read speed on the Black, well, it hits three and a quarter terabytes a second. Three and a quarter terabytes a second read speed. And the write speed towing over 2.8 terabytes a sec 2.8 terabytes of data being written a second that's that's a very large number 
especially when you consider the best the standard SATA connected SSD did was half a single terabyte in either direction, and that's because SATA caps out at a bandwidth throughput of 600 megabytes a second, allowing for overhead, that's... that means that's as fast as this SATA drive can get. That's it. While NVMe has much fatter pipes. And less overhead, by the way. Oh, and for poops and giggles, I also tested my big old mechanical mass storage drive at 10 terabytes. It's very handy for all my video files and recordings to sit on and such, but it kind of embarrassed itself when it came to speed. <laughs> all lack of. Now, it can be tricky to visually show you in a video like this the difference the kind of speed I can pull from the WD Black can be. It's something that you can certainly feel on many tasks when doing things like video editing or working with large files, like big Photoshop documents and such. And WD do target the marketing at gamers for this kind of thing. And in gaming, there's a lot of other factors that can affect the speed of a game load. But even here, that adds up pretty quick. It's fair to say the difference in load times isn't near as dramatic as moving from a mechanical or even hybrid drive to a normal SSD, especially a good one from a trusty brand where you can get nice consistent performance. Believe me, those cheaper ones with brands you've never heard of, they're nice and cheap, sure, but not worth it. Oh, they are just so not worth it. Being there, hated that. I advise against it. But even here, against what is one of the better SATA SSDs out there, frankly, it's a pretty noticeable difference all the same while pulling a game off the WD Black NVMe drive instead. And the less time I spend watching a loading animation or a percentage ticker, the more time I can actually be playing a game. So I will take every fistful of seconds I can. Thank you very much. Good day, sir. And coming back to that trust thing, by the way, I mentioned before that the heatsink model isn't a need. It's just nice. But with or without the heatsink, this is also one of those many reasons why you're better off going with a brand that has years of trust behind it, because you can have faith they've properly engineered for and extensively tested things like these kind of heat duty cycles. And coming back to the matter of heat, by the way, even when I had it under benchmarking loads, I never even managed to get this thing beyond 56 degrees. And that, frankly, is a lot lower than I thought I'd be able to push it to. While the heat spreader is, to be fair, not an essential thing, it is an extra bit of peace of mind towards the longevity and consistent performance of your drive. And this is why many motherboards these days have at least a simple heat spreader of some kind. Which are, by the way, almost always removable, so you can use a drive like this even if you have a motherboard with those already on it. And let's be frank here, given the choice between those built-on heat spreaders you get with the motherboards these days, or a drive which comes with its own bespoke custom designed factory fresh heat sink right out of the box ready to go made especially for it you'd choose this wouldn't you i would especially if what you're after is the most monstrously brutal high performance option you can get and let's face it a lot of us want the most brutal br brutal the most brutal high performance come on bloody this is sponsored video get it right the most brutally, astonishingly jaw-dropping and press your friend's big move you can possibly make. You gotta be looking at this, don't you? You gotta be looking at the WD Black SN750 and that little innocent looking acronym in the tiny little text NVME because the difference those four letters make over the other four letters, the, the relatively choke-chained SATA interface, that's the way to go. I've just shown you in numbers and in, in real world results. So again, thank you to WD for throwing a pile of these at me to test to make videos for you all now there. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed already, get subscribed because the next video I'm gonna make about the WD stuff, well, doing a giveaway. So you, you're gonna wanna keep an eye out for that. I promise you. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and we'll catch you next time. I wonder if they'll let me keep in that bit where I alluded to the big <laughs> move. Sponsored videos have to be approved. So they're on brand. But then again, they said I could do what I want.